everybody, we are down here at the Sea of Galilee with Rabbi Ken Spiro. We, some of you saw us yesterday, we were at the Jordan River. It's Arab Shabbat. We, everything is almost ready. I just got to get the chicken put into the oven and the vegetables before uh, Shabbat. So we had some time. We decided to come down and see the Kinneret. I haven't seen it since the quarantine and neither have you, right? Yeah, exactly. And we just wanted to see what it looked like full and we had a surprise the city is loaded with tourists some have masks on some don't we actually found a shawarma we just had a juicy delicious shawarma exactly. all israeli tourists yeah. no foreign tourists but... that's true all yeah. israeli tourists we met a couple from jerusalem who were the people we met at the river the other day from somewhere in the shamron yeah, yeah. people from all over the country are coming up to take pleasure and you're hearing in the background pleasure boats people are renting pleasure boats here yeah the beaches are closed so, yeah the beaches are all you can't closed. swim but you can go on a boat but you can get a shawarma and we actually sat outside at a oh table it's amazing it, the things you learn to appreciate yeah exactly sitting outside a restaurant. exactly sitting outside in a restaurant so we just finished our shawarma we walked down here i'm sure if you've been here here, down by the lake in Tiberias at the end of the pedestrian walk give me a thumbs up and uh, I know some of you have and we're here Kenny you can tell us about what's sure. behind us that well behind monument you right over yourself. right over there yeah over there that is the uh, it's it's actually an outline of the Sea of Galilee right, you can a silhouette. It. You can yeah. see, so by the way it also gives you in, in Hebrew it's Kinneret and one of the theories where the name comes from is the word Kinor which is the word for harp and they say like if you King look, David's harp. yeah, King David's harp. And if you look from an aerial view down, oh, look at that. it looks like a biblical harp. Wow. So that is one of the theories. Never knew so, that. but what's really cool is in there you can't really see because of the sunlight, but there's a little dial there that's giving you the height of the water now. And we know this 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 is the top of the Jordan Valley, which is Israel's eastern border. There's the Golan Heights on the other side. That was Syrian-controlled territory until uh, June 10th, 1967. Now it's part of Israel. And the valley goes all the way down through the Dead Sea, all the way down to the Gulf of Aqaba. It's Israel's eastern border, and we are 200 meters below sea level here. So when you measure the height of the water, it's actually saying minus 209. Well, 208.9. 208 right. And as, it's, as, as it goes, it's interesting because it's, it's counterintuitive. As the evaporation lowers the level, the number goes up, which right. sounds the opposite. So 209 is great because we're, if you look around, you can see it's amazing. I, last year I was here. Yeah, let's go walk towards yeah, you can the, see. Uh, we'll get a little bit closer. You can, uh, there, it was like a 20 foot drop here. You could not even bring boats into here because there was no water. And you can see that literally the water level has gone up. I'm not like, 15, 20 feet since the beginning of the winter. Amazing, they said it was gonna take like 10 years of rain to fill it up. You wanna see a miracle? It's literally, we are literally, and it's super hot today. It's in the, it's over, it's like about 100 oh, degrees a out here. Look at the fish. fish right over there. But this was about 10 feet down on the rocks over here. And uh, <clears throat> we're literally, you could see, we're within a few feet of overflowing. The, the the shoreline, which is incredible. There's you get, not over here, but you see these trees sticking that are submerged underwater now because for so many years the water level was so low. Right. So there we're looking all the way across. At, at its maximum, it's about uh, 12 kilometers across, which is about eight miles, seven eight miles. Uh, I'm trying to convince Ken we have enough time before Shabbat to drive over there. That's where oh the Inar Hotel is on the other side, the Golan Heights side yeah. of the lake. And by the way, Syrians got all the way to within a few hundred meters. Shows you the Golani Brigade, incredible military feat that they were able to get up that 1,200 feet up, one of the most heavily fortified, it's like the North and South Korean border there. Fortified minefield, bunker in place, place. They did it in basically a day and they took the uh, Golan Heights from the Syrians who used to use it to shoot down all the farmers and shell places in Israel. So now it's under Israel sovereignty. But if we go that way, another 40 miles, we end up in Damascus. I, uh, I'm gonna tell Ken, our tour guide, something that I don't know he knows right now. So one of the people that took the Golan Heights in 67 is the old timer in our synagogue, Baidech. I showed it in his house right, in right. Yavniel. His grandfather was one of the founders. He was in the Golani Brigade. There were a lot of Yavni Elim, a lot of guys from, of his vintage that were in the Golani, you know why? Because the Golani Brigade was founded in Yavne. Really? And the I Golani did, tree, know, yeah. yeah, the Golani tree, the semel for the Golani it's is a, an oak just, tree. It's an oak tree, yeah. So I can take you out and we can drive down into the fields the outside of Yavniel. 
there's the original tree where the Golani soldiers used to hang out and make a picnic and a barbecue. The tree is actually still there. That's even better because my son, who is now an emergency room doctor in Shari Tzedek, was a combat medic in the Golani Brigade. There you go. So, uh, so by ditch, uh, if we went to shul, we're not going to go to synagogue because it's still shut, but he could tell you the story about what it was like in 67 to take the Golan Heights. He was with them. Right, right. Have you seen the show that they did on Netflix about Ellie Cohen, the spy, right. with Sasha Baron Cohen, who was in there till 1965. He provided a lot of really important information as a spy, high, the high, one of the greatest spy stories and tragic spy stories in Israel's history, but that really helped the Israeli army on that last day of the 67 war take that uh, Golan Heights. I'm sorry if I'm not showing you everything clearly. I'm messing around because it's so bright and sunny. So it's 40 here. degrees here. Yes. How much Celsius. is that Fahrenheit? Well, you double it's 80, subtract 10%, is 72 and add 32 to it. So it's 104 degrees. Yeah, it's 104 degrees. Very sunny, so it's hard to see my screen. So I apologize. So, but the tourists are out in full force, renting boats. Here's a guy, a couple guys just took out this boat. You can tell because it's got a number on it. And they're just bringing their boat back out in the lake. You can see out there people water skiing. Uh, what's that thing? Skidoo. Not um, skidoo. Right? It's not the... Uh, the, uh, the uh, what do what they, they call it? it? <laughs> I'm from Canada, so I know about snowmobiles. Uh, and water this skis, is... Water skis. No, he was water skiing, but the, the thing that you ride, it's like a motorcycle. Ski-doo? Ski I don't forget what it's called. Here, Kenny's so excited he's taking a picture. I'm taking pictures. Uh, before we're going to continue a little bit, I just want to let you know what we decided is on Yom Yerushalayim. Actually, the day before, because Yom Yerushalayim is on a Friday. Jerusalem Day, yeah. Right, so on the day before, on Thursday, May, whatever it is, this week coming up. This week coming up. Next, a week, less than a week away. On Thursday, coming up, we're going to have a special open Zoom session with me and Ken, and it's going to be about Yom Yerushalayim, Jerusalem Day, the day the city in 1967 was reunified. Ken's going to actually be in his apartment in, in the, the old, old city, city yeah. of Jerusalem. I'll be up in Yavneel. We're going to do a Zoom session. I'm going to give you the link uh, down below. And we're, it's going to be open to whoever wants to come and see it. It'll be broadcasting 7 p.m. our time. That'll be noon Eastern Daylight Time. And everybody adjust accordingly, right? So that means on the coast, in the West Coast, in Los Angeles, it'll be 9 a.m. you're in Hawaii, it'll be really early. Well, I, we have people in Alaska, <laughs> North Pole, Alaska. It's actually a lot earlier, too. But they're, they're good about it. They join in. And there'll be a replay available for whoever registers. So you're going to have to register for that. I'm going to put the link in the, down below. And Ken and I, we're going to have a discussion with all of you and uh, about the significance of Yom Yerushalayim, some things you never heard about, the importance of it, the military, the, the spiritual aspects of it. So stay tuned for that. Okay, you want to say anything else uh, while we're here about... Yeah, I'd love to go in the water. Yeah, right. The, sad, the saddest part is every, all, all the beaches are still closed. Right. But... We did see people um, yeah, yes. at know. some of those beaches. There's no, they're closed and there's no lifeguards, yeah. but you can park your car, walk over, and we saw there were lots well, it's, of people it's, it's, swimming. It's part of the Jewish personality that we Jews are very independent. We're called the stiff-necked people in the Bible. So right. in Israel, rules are basically suggestions. Right. Sometimes followed, sometimes not so followed. So right, um, right. So uh, yeah, we could have done that. And uh, it looks so inviting, especially when it's 104 degrees. Exactly. And the water's exactly. so beautiful, high and cool. Exactly. All right, so for now, we're going to check out. Remember, next week, I'm going to put the link down in the comments. I'll try to tag you with the information on how to sign up for that uh, live Zoom session on Yom Yerushalayim. That's a uh, week yesterday, this coming Thursday. And uh, But later, we're going to try to go across the lake or somewhere else, and we'll check in a little bit later. Okay, see you later.